said. Um, today we're going to talk about discipline. Discipline. Wow. Think of that word, discipline. I think some people may hate discipline just as much as they hate submission. talk about understanding discipline now I in my own life I, I constantly think on uh, words that start with D okay um, first and foremost my wife Dixie so oh I'm always God. thinking about her so <laughs> hey I, I had to throw that in there but anyways uh, things like destiny discipline determination desire drive definiteness um, you know, it are among some of them, okay? Um, those type of words, if you focus in on them, you concentrate on them, you understand what do they mean in your life, I think will help you out. So consider that, and, and I'll give you something today. So today we're going to talk about uh, understanding discipline. We're going to talk about self-discipline and just discipline, okay? Because there's a difference. So when you think of self-discipline, what is self-discipline? Self self-discipline is the ability to control yourself and behave a certain way without anyone telling you what to do, okay? So you don't need someone else to tell you what to do. You're just, you have self-discipline and you just do it. Now, I'm going to give you a scripture here and I'm going to read it. I, I love the New Living Translation of the Bible. And uh, again, as always, if somebody can put this in the chat box, uh, I would really much appreciate it. And it's in 2 Timothy chapter number 1 and verse number 7. Very familiar passage here that we're going to discuss. Um, again, I'm reading in the New Living Translation. I, I love what it says there. Amplifies good, American Standard, so on. It says, for God has not given us a spirit of fear and timidity but of power, love, and self-discipline. Now, the King James says a sound mind. But when we talk about having a sound mind, we're talking about a mind that has been disciplined by self using the principles of the kingdom of God, the word of God itself, applying those things into your life and becoming disciplined there. Can I share what it, the definition? Yes, go right ahead. Discipline. So this is okay. You awesome. may, I don't, can you? This hopefully, you guys awesome. can hear her. Okay, go ahead. This is awesome mm -hmm. because with the sound mind, because it says discipline, the practice of training people to obey rules or a code of behavior using punishment or correction from which is disobedience. Right. A controlled behavior resulting from discipline. That is really good. Yes. That is awesome. Yes. So your, your mind being controlled yeah. by God and practice to be trained yep. to obey the word of God. You, you hear That's that? Awesome. A mind. Awesome. Say that again. A mind that has. Practices. That practices. And is trained to obey. Yes. The word of God. So that and that's that's perfect. That leads awesome. right into what I'm that's saying. Awesome. So so again, your life will be dramatically different in 2020 if you just focus on this one D discipline. And again, I gave you the definition of self discipline, but what what uh, Dixie just said kind of leads me into just discipline at large because we we don't really understand what discipline is, especially from a kingdom dynamic. Okay, so. Um, just in general, discipline, watch this now, discipline is training that corrects. Yeah. Okay? It's training that corrects how? Through instruction, a system, or an activity. Okay? So we need discipline or we need to be disciplined. Okay? Don't, don't think of discipline as from a kingdom perspective, that you're being punished. Think of discipline as you're being trained. Yeah. You're being corrected. You're being instructed within a system, and our system is the kingdom of heaven. That is the system 
that we're to operate from. That is the platform that we were all supposed to have our life built upon. That's, that's the way I guess I'm else to say. Okay, she's that excited so today, I could tell. Because, <laughs> because um, um, there's a book that, that um, I was looking at, excerpts that my daughter had sent to me, mm -hmm. and uh, it was talking, we, we, we do things from a punishment place. But that's not where God wants that's us right. to do it from. Not, not right. from, I'm going to obey God because I don't want to be punished. I, even, you know, you have this religious saying, well, I don't want to go to hell because I'm doing this behavior. Right. Or, you know, I'm, I'm trying to do this to miss hell. Yep. They'll, they'll, they'll make a lot of, of um, they'll refer a lot to uh, be doing what they're doing to go to heaven, you know, so they won't go to hell, you know. But this discipline, and even like I, the first definition I gave was a definition that was in the, the um, um, dictionary about, you know, using punishment to correct disobedience. But the, what you said was absolutely good because it's like, it's to train yourself to do something and a, 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 where you control it. Right. It's the way that you choose to go. Yes. You know, it doesn't have to do with, I'm not, I'm going to do this so I don't get this. Right. So it's doing it because I choose to do it. And that's why he said, if you love me, keep my commandments. So your Absolutely. love is the motivator, not because you're going to be punished. Yes. Is the motivator. Yes. So and, that's and, and that's good. I, I want to say something on that. So much to talk about today, but again, we're going to do it. We're going to do it and keep it, keep it to where you can grab, gravitate to it and understand it. So when you talk about uh, love, so loving God, when we love God, we, we actually accept his discipline into our life. And we also are to love ourselves. Let's not forget about that. And that allows us or that positions us to have self-discipline. Okay, now watch this. Hebrews chapter number 12. Again, put this in the comments. Hebrews chapter 12, we're going to go verses 5 through uh, 11. And I'm, again, in the New Living Translation. You can look at other translations. That's fine as well. Um, it says, uh, And have you forgotten the encouraging words God spoke to you as his children? For he said, My child. See, this is what God is saying to you. My child, don't make light of the Lord's discipline. And don't give up when he corrects you. Okay? For the Lord disciplines. Again, what is discipline? It's not punishment. God does not punish you. Okay? He teaches you. He corrects you through a system known as the kingdom of God by his word that instructs you in his ways. For it says here, for the Lord disciplines who he loves. And watch this. And he punishes each one he accepts a child. But that word is not punish. It's still discipline. Discipline does not punish. Discipline instructs. That's what that word is. Verse number seven, as you endure, watch this, as you endure his, this divine discipline, I love that word, divine discipline. Remember that God is treating you as his own children. Who ever heard of a child who is never disciplined by his father? Oh, we're going somewhere today, believe me. If God doesn't discipline you as he does all his children, it means that you are illegitimate and are not really his child at all. Since we respected our earthly fathers who disciplined us, shouldn't we submit even more to the discipline of the father of our spirits and live forever? Ever? That is so powerful. If we accept, if we, if, if, if we submit to the Lord's discipline, which is teaching and training and correction, then it says here, we're going to live forever. Powerful, powerful truth. For our earthly fathers disciplined us <clears throat> for a few years, doing the best they knew how. But God's discipline is always good for us so that we might share in his holiness. Some of you all are talking about holiness. Well, you're going to have to be disciplined, okay? You're going to have to, to submit to his instruction. Verse number 11, no discipline <clears throat> is enjoyable while it's happening. Oh, man, I'm going to have so much fun with you guys today. But it's painful. But afterwards, 
there will be a peaceful harvest of right living for those who are trained in this way. Isn't that, I love that scripture. That's so powerful. Um, I'll give you another scripture. <clears throat> it's in, <coughs> pardon, <coughs> pardon me, <coughs> early in the morning. Um, it's in Psalms chapter number 34, excuse me, chapter number 94. And let's go over here. I want to show you something. 94 verse number 12. Um, again, Psalms 94, 12. Joyful are those you joyful are those you discipline, Lord, those who teach you teach, excuse me, those you teach with your instruction. Okay. You give them relief from troubled times until a pit is dug <clears throat> to capture the wicked. The Lord will not reject his people. He will not abandon his special procession. So check this out. It says here that <clears throat> you get relief in troubled times when you are disciplined or taught and instructed by the Lord. Powerful, powerful scripture there. So. Discipline is important, both accepting the discipline of the Lord, the training, the correction, the instruction, and self-discipline, which is your ability to control yourself to, and behave in a certain way. You know, God made us to be obedient. You talked about, my wife talked about obedience, I think it was a couple of weeks ago, and God created us to be obedient vessels to his word. But he also gave us a will. He gave us the ability to choose. We can obey or we can not. We can be disobedient. We cannot obey. But at the end of the day, when we obey the word of God, it positions us so that we can become self or, or operate from self-discipline. God wants you to have self-discipline. Once you accept his word into your heart and learn, self-discipline is key. Why? See, if, if you're going to be successful, then understanding this thing about discipline is critical. Self-discipline is a kingdom key to success. Now, last week, we talked about vision. We talked about goals, okay? And Self-discipline, hear me very clearly, self-discipline helps you stay focused so that you can realize those worthy goals that you've established. So if you have vision for your life, you have goals that you've written down, you're going to have to, this is why I'm talking to you right after goals, you're going to have to understand discipline and self-discipline because without self-discipline, most likely you're going to give up on the goal, okay? You're essentially going to simply plan to do something, and by having no self-discipline, that plan is going to, to just, you know, change, or it's going to uh, fizzle away. Why? Because there's going to be winds, floods, there's going to be storms, there's going to be circumstances, situations that keep you from being rock solid. So really, self-discipline and goals go together. OK, you need that because it self-discipline galvanizes, as it were, the goal in your own life to get her done. OK, so what does the word of God say about this? Well, let's go to Joshua chapter one, verse number eight. Let's look at something here. OK, because we because self-discipline helps us stay focused on the goal. Even Paul, the apostle, says, I look. Okay, he, he, was so, he was disciplined in himself to continually look at the prize, the goal. Okay, he did not consider all the other stuff. He stayed true. Why? Because he had discipline in his life. Okay, Joshua 1 8, it says, Study this book of instruction continually, meditate on it. Watch this now, day and night. So you will be sure to do everything written it. Only then will you prosper and succeed in all you do. So you need to meditate day and night. Meditation, okay, I'm talking about meditating on the Word of God and then taking that and applying that 
word in your life, creating worthy goals for your life based on the desires of your heart that has been purified because you're delivered from the word. Now you can meditate on your goals. And so again, I shared this with you last week. You want to look at your goals. You want to consistently look at your goals. The, the Bible says day and night. So some of the most successful people, you're going to find out that they actually look at their goals when they wake up, they review them. And when they go to bed, they review them. So they're always, they're, they're doing, and some of these are not even Christians. It's the world. They're actually doing what Habakkuk says, writing the vision, make it plain, reading it, running with it. So we have, a, we, we have difficulty doing that, many of us, especially as Christians, because we, we, we're, we're, we don't live a disciplined life. And being a believer is about a disciplined life. It's not about lasciviousness and wantonness and roaming around and all this other stuff. That's not what it's about, okay? So again, we're here to help you today. If you have questions, you have comments, go ahead and put that in the chat section. We'll get to that. So most people, not all, but most people lack healthy discipline. Now, at the end of the day, we're probably all disciplined to some degree. When I talk about discipline, I'm saying now self-discipline in so much that we're disciplined, but we're disciplined to do the wrong thing, okay? We're on automatic pilot based on things that are in our heart, in our subconscious, programs, routines that we just operate from. So we're disciplined, but we're disciplined to do unhealthy things, toxic things, or another word would be demonic things, okay? But most people do lack discipline of the Lord, and most people, of course, lack self-discipline. This is why a lot of people, especially, especially believers, okay, get offended and trigger when they're disciplined, okay? So what, what do we mean? What do we mean by that? Well, I can say this. My wife and I, we've been ministering for, for decades, um, we've, we, we preach, we teach, we counseled, um, we coach, um, we instruct, uh, we, we rebuke, uh, we, we correct, we, we do a lot of stuff. And one of the things that I can say I've, I've found is that it's always been very difficult for people to accept discipline. Again, if discipline based on what my wife read, what I'm stating here as well, if discipline is teaching, training, correction, then you should just want to accept that. But people who lack discipline, especially self-discipline, are always offended. They're offended. They're, they get so offended, they leave the church. Somebody says something to them. They become quick to take an offense their stronghold that they're, un, uh, that they're undisciplined to deal with triggers them and they manifest rejection, pride, anxiety, retaliation, Jezebel, you know, witchcraft, uh, pride, Leviathan. I mean, a host of different demons begin to manifest because they're triggered. Okay. Why? Because they're not disciplined. So, it's important to, 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 to deal with this. It's important, vitally important, that you, in your life, that you attend to this, that you commit to living a disciplined life in 2020 and then, <clears throat> you know, the, throughout the rest of your life. So if you're, gonna, if you're going to live out any worthy goal or realize any vision in your life, you're going to need to be disciplined. Okay, so if you have goals, if you have dreams, you have vision. Oh, I want to, I have a vision for ministry. You know, I, I love what, you know, people, when people say that I have a vision for ministry, I have a vision for a healthy home, or I have a vision for healthy relationships, I have a vision for a healthy marriage. Well, let me just say this, by, by having that vision or having that goal, you're not going to achieve that without being disciplined. It's just not going to happen, okay? So again, two components, discipline of the Lord, teaching, training, correction, etc., and then self-discipline where you have the ability within yourself to say no. 
no to self. Okay? I mean, the Word of God always talks about putting the flesh under or crucifying the flesh, right? Well, how do you do that? Well, that's going to be self-discipline. You're going to have to, your will is going to make that decision that I'm not going to do that. Okay? Why? Because the, the choices you make in life, and quite frankly, all the choices that you're going to make all throughout the day are decisions that ultimately determine your destiny. Okay? There's some more Ds. Okay? Jot that down. Decisions determine your destiny. Okay? So any choice that you're going to make today and all throughout your life, okay, those choices, those decisions will ultimately determine your destiny. So this is why I always say, we always say, especially to our coaching participants, is this, is that your, your life, you declare where you want, you tell yourself where you want it to go, okay? Now, I'm sorry, but the, the trickery of, of a lot of, you know, that's in the church, well, if you just declare it and decree it, it's, it's so, <laughs> there's more to it. That's a true statement but it's an incomplete statement because you're going to have to renew your mind. You're going to have to deal with those, those programs, those self-limiting beliefs that are running within deep within your subconscious. Okay. Those things that are in your heart. Remember the Bible says as a man thinketh in his heart, as a man thinks in his subconscious, so is he. And, 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 I always say 95% of what you do during the day is based on your subconscious. That's probably a low number. I actually recently uh, heard and studied that it's upward to 97%, okay? But I'll say 95. So if 95% of what you're doing, 95% of the choices you're going to make today are predicated on your belief system deep in your heart, subconscious, which is there based on what occurred in your life in what you were taught and trained, specifically from your family of origin, then the choices you make during the day may be unhealthy choices, okay? And I just said, choices determine destiny. So this is why we must accept discipline and have self-discipline because that needs to change, okay? Because, see, your learned behaviors, and we'll call that, see, when, when we talk about the flesh, the flesh is those ungodly, worldly, this system, okay, this worldly system, it's, it, it, the flesh is, are, is those beliefs or are those beliefs, okay? That's the flesh. That's what you have to deal with. That's what Paul was talking about has to be that you have to deal with. So your learned behaviors and self-limiting beliefs what they end up doing is they rise to the occasion and demand, okay? They demand that you make self-sabotaging decisions. You follow me? So, so what you learned in life, specifically between the ages zero and eight, your family of origin, the things you went through, the things you heard, the things you saw, those things throughout the day are always rising to the occasion unbeknownst to you. And they place a demand on you to make decisions that are largely self-sabotaging. So this is why we, this is exactly why we coach people in life is to help you go from there to your, to, to, to where you really want to go and understand who you really are. Okay. Now I want to, I want to say this as well. If you struggle with discipline, if you, if you definitely, if you struggle with receiving discipline, like let's say, for example, I'm discipling you. If I'm discipling you and I discipline you and you reject it, you trigger, you manifest, you, you, you have a, you know, you, you, you get in a tizzy, uh, you, you, you just, you're angry, you, you run, you leave, you isolate, you, you go in the quarter, whatever your, your, whatever it is that you do then that's saying that you have not, you don't have a disciplined life. You weren't disciplined correctly. And watch this now, okay? Being undisciplined is an indication that you were not taught by your father. I'll say it again. Being undisciplined in life is an indication that you 
were not taught by your father, father, dad, father. Okay. Well, how do I know this? Well, let me show you something. Okay. I mean, it's just practical knowledge, but let me give you, let me give you scripture. Okay. Ephesians chapter six, verse number four. Okay. Powerful truth here. Powerful truth. It says here in Ephesians chapter six, verse number four. All right. Fathers, not mothers. Oh, 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 not mothers. So all you that are connected to mommy. Okay. And God bless our mothers. God bless them. Okay. They're wonderful. Couldn't, couldn't live effectively without them. Bless them. Okay. Children rise up and call your mother blessed. But this scripture says, fathers, do not provoke, provoke your children to anger by the way you treat them. Rather, fathers, bring them up with the discipline and instruction that comes from the Lord. So if you have difficulty with discipline or you have difficulty with self-discipline, mostly it's saying that you were not properly disciplined, taught, instructed, trained, corrected by your father. See, this is why we always say, especially in our coaching lane, we're, we're always telling people, look, we ask them this question. I ask this question all the time. Everybody that comes to me and my wife as participants in our coaching, I always ask them certain questions. And this question I always ask, did your father train you, teach you in the ways of the Lord so that when you became of age, you had a solid foundation to build your life on? And so far, 100%. Of the response is no I did not get that so that's saying that largely you are you have a problem with discipline and you you have difficulty with self-discipline okay Proverbs chapter number three let me give you again just jot please somebody please put in the comments hopefully somebody's doing that um, Proverbs chapter 3 verse number 11 my children what's it saying God saying my children Again, as a father to son or daughter, my children don't reject the Lord's discipline and don't be upset. <laughs> don't be upset when he corrects you. For the Lord corrects who? Those he loves. Just as a father corrects, word is discipline, disciplines a child in whom he delights. Okay? All right. Let me just see if there's any questions. Let me go over here real quick. Uh, okay. No questions. Okay. All right. So we'll just, we'll just move forward. Uh, so self-discipline is really willpower. Okay. You need to have willpower. It's very important that we, 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 we take it. We have our will. Our will has been purified by the word of God. It's been taught. It's been trained. It's been exercised, um, you know, to where our will is healthy. Self-discipline, jot this down. Self-discipline is the ability to control your reactions and behaviors. So when we when we say, oh, I, I, I have self-control, you're, what you're saying is I have the ability to control my reactions and behaviors. Now again, I wish I had my whiteboard here, but your reactions and behaviors are, you know, that's the outcome. Your actions and behaviors are based on your emotions, which are based on your thoughts. So thoughts, I think it, I feel it, I do it. I think it, I feel it, I do it. You know, I, I'm trying as I get older to make life a little bit easier to understand, okay? So I don't I try not to focus on too much, but think it, feel it, I do it. Think it, feel it, I react to it, okay? You got it? This is why, and I, lo I love... And my wife started this journey well over a decade ago. Renew the mind, renew the mind, renew the mind, renew the mind, the mind, the mind, the mind, the mind. And she's absolutely 100% correct. We need to be focusing on the soul realm, mind, will, and emotions. Deal with that. The word of God is the word of God. Our spirit man, totally redeemed. We're good there, but we got to focus on in, the, in, in this area. So self, so I want to, okay, I want to say this because I really think this is going to help you. Okay. Self-discipline allows you to forego short-term gratification for long-term satisfaction. That may be something you write down. Okay. 
I'll say it again. Okay. Matter of fact, somebody can type it. That would be even better. Self-discipline allows you to forego short-term gratification for long-term satisfaction. Okay. Again, self-discipline, disciplining yourself, teaching, training, correcting yourself allows you to forego short-term gratification, okay, for long-term satisfaction, okay? God says, with long life, I will satisfy you. So when you're undisciplined, you're going to choose things that are not in your best interest. I'll say it again. When you're not self-disciplined, you're not going to choose things that are in your best interest. You're going to choose things, but we're really not in your best interest. For example, think about Jewish choices you make. Think about things you do. Think about maybe there's some unhealthy thing, unhealthy behavior, action, whatever it may be. So, for example, smoking, okay? Um, you're choosing to smoke, okay? Whatever you smoke. Smoke cigarettes, smoke weed, whatever you smoke, whatever you smoke, okay? You're making a choice to smoke, and that is not in your best interest, but you still choose it, okay? Why? Because you want the short-term satisfaction. And if you can get this, I'm telling you, this, I got this. Now, I'm applying and still working on applying it in my life. Do I have a master? No but I'm working on it. So you smoke a cigarette, <sighs> that feeling, you light it up, smoke it, you have short-term satisfaction, right? But do you have, do you have long-term satisfaction? No, you have short-term gratification, you gratify yourself, but you don't have any satisfaction long-term. It's self-destructive, you follow me? Now it could be smoking, it could be alcohol, it could be uh, drugs, right? Um, it can be, uh, let's, let's use fornicating, for example, sin, sex. Okay. Not sex sin, but, um, lust. Okay. And fornication, perversion, um, pornography, uh, you know, adultery, wh whatever it is. Okay. Uh, obesity, uh, uh, uh overeating, um, uh, uh, obesity, uh, whatever, whatever the activity is, are those things in your, you know, is it in your, is it in your best interest to consume high calorie diets, unhealthy, high fat, high sodium diets, hyper sugar diets, foods that are, uh, what's, what is it in, injected with, uh, high fructose corn syrup? Okay. Well, see, what was that study, Dixie, that we were reading about where high fructose, you were telling me about high fructose corn syrup. Was it President Nixon or somebody? There was something that Congress did. Yeah. Um, what happened? Yeah, he, he, wanted, he didn't want the um, actual, um, his, his, his um, political means to be on food. Mm -hmm. So he, the, all his company, food companies put high fructose syrup in their food to make it taste better because they were taking it out of it. So if I'm saying it right, right, they put a lot of that syrup in everything to make it taste better. Right. So therefore that um, right because the food right. was just bland, right. tasteless. So 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 the government that syrup, that syrup made everything yeah so the government actually passed laws. I think it was Nixon or some one of those presidents. Anyways, um pass a law that food would actually taste better because food was bland. It wasn't, in, you know, enjoyable or whatever. And apparently, uh, president, Congress, whoever passed this law and said, Hey, you could put high fructose corn syrup in yeah. foods. So, so today, like if you read it and when she told me that, I was like, really? So I started looking at stuff. I'm like, Oh my God, crackers and Cheetos. And yeah, we have just, it's like, really? So all this, this, yeah, bread. All this is being injected in us again. So why? Well, because it's short-term gratification, okay, at the expense of long-term satisfaction. This is why people are sick. 
and diseased in part. This is why people don't live as long as they're as healthy as they should, okay? You, you, you follow me? Okay. Tasha, you want to say something? You're, you're up here. Go ahead. No, that was a mistake. I'm sorry. Oh, okay. Okay. No, that's, that's fine. Okay. So, so again, um, we want to, you know, it's kind of like this. Again, I wish I had a chart, but it's like this. Anything that starts with where you're, where you're looking for instant gratification. Again, you're driving, you're hungry, you stop at McDonald's. Instant gratification, right? Okay. So if you have instant gratification, the Bible says this, sin is pleasurable for a season. <laughs> okay. Sin is pleasurable for a season. So, you know, whatever. It could be fornication. It could be uh, pornography. It could be ingesting all of this garbage into our body. It could be uh, drugs, alcohol. It could be uh, hanging out with the wrong crowd. It could be laziness. It could be a lot of different things, okay? It has short-term gratification. So if we look at, if we were to do a, a, a chart, and let's just say we, hopefully I'm doing it right on the screen here. Let's just say you have a chart and you go like this, okay? And on this side, it's instant gratification. And the bottom is, is long-term satisfaction. Instant gratification, I mean, at the top, you have this great feeling, right? You have this awesome feeling, and it's like, wow, you're way up here, okay? It, but over time, it diminishes quick. It burns out, okay? But short, uh, uh, but long-term satisfaction, initially, it's hard. I mean, it's hard to eat a salad over a, 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 a cheese bacon burger smothered in onions and all that other stuff. It's, it's hard to do that. I mean, sometimes salads are boring. They're just very boring. Okay, eating healthy foods can be one of the most boringest things that exists. You can spice it up, obviously, but in general, it's boring. It's 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 much more pleasurable, at least initially, from a gratification standpoint, to go and get a pizza. But are you if you eat pizza and you have that short term satisfaction, typically within a few minutes, if not a few hours, you feel like garbage because you know you just put a bunch of garbage basically in your body. Okay. You, you follow that? So we have to look to work on, on, on self-discipline. Some of you, who, who out there suffers from procrastination? Okay. I do, I do, right? Okay. So that's the reason you procrastinate is because you, you suffer from discipline. You suffer from self-discipline. Okay. There, there's two ways that you, you, you approach something. One of the ways you approach something is this. It's like writing a book. Let's say you want to write a book, okay? So on one side, it's like, well, I will wait until I feel I like it. Like, I will wait until I feel like I like writing the book. Then I will do it. So you're, you're ruled by the way you feel. Well, when I feel like working out, I'll go do it. When I feel like 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 writing the book when I feel like writing the paper when I feel like going and you know going to school or when I feel like something then I'll actually do it okay the 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 self discipline says I will do it then I will begin to feel like I like it so I don't think there's any place better than uh, working out exercising so if, you, if you're sitting there and you haven't worked out in a very long time, I mean a long time, and then all of a sudden you say, you know, I'm going to go to the gym. Okay, great. Awesome goals. But again, if you're waiting to feel like it, you're most likely never going to do it. And that's called procrastinate. Then you're saying, oh, I procrastinate. But if you do it, as you do it, you are going to begin to feel like you like it. This is why people that go to the gym say, man, I just, I just got to go to the gym. I just got to go to the gym. And you're looking at them like they're crazy and saying, wow, because they've gotten into the habit of doing it. So again, when we talk about discipline, don't look at discipline as punishment. Look at it as your ability to forego that immediate gratification for long-term satisfaction, as well as self-respect and dignity, okay? So let me quickly just say this, 
before we before we finish up here, how do you how do you gain discipline? How do you create self discipline? Okay, you create self discipline by creating or developing habits, new habits. Okay, once you start something, okay, or excuse me, once something becomes a habit, at that point you no longer need to force yourself to do it. it it's really automatic because it's programmed in your subconscious. So one of my goals, I don't know if I shared this with you guys last time, but one of my goals this year is to wake up early. Okay. I, my wife is sitting right here. She knows I am not a early morning person. I'm not. Okay. But I want to be, I need to be. Okay. Because I know that when you, when you study the lives of people who have been impactful into this in this world who have been highly successful whatever on average they wake up anywhere between four and five okay now four stretching it for me five is a little bit easier but i came up with six that's my goal so six o'clock okay so at six o'clock i'm going to wake up now at first do i want to do it no i hate it i want to lay in the bed or I want to sleep till, you know, 7.30 or 8, whatever. I just want to stretch it, whatever. Okay, but my wife's sitting here. She can attest to it. I, I've been, I'm starting to get up, okay? Got up the other day, 5.30. Got up yesterday, what was it, 6.15, okay? Um, today, 5.59, okay? So on. So I'm doing it. Do I want to do it? No. Does it hurt? Yes. Is it pleasurable? No. But long-term, I'm going to get satisfaction. But the key to it is this, is that I'm creating a new habit. Once you create a new habit, then the old habit's gone. See, people are always saying, well, I just need to stop the habit. <laughs> you're, you're approaching it wrong. You don't stop a habit. You start a new one in its place. Okay? You, you understand that? Why? Because then what happens is your subconscious mind just takes over. It's going to wake you up. I mean, my wife, she's an early person. Do you, do you need an alarm clock to get up, Dixie? No. no of course not. She, I've, never, I've never heard an alarm clock. She just gets up. Why? Because she's, she's in the habit of doing it. And, and again, that's the self-discipline. I'm going to force myself to do it, okay? Then I create a habit. Then you're living the disciplined lifestyle. It means nothing. You, you, you'll come across pizza, chips. You'll come across, you know... You, People are always like, oh, I just can't control myself. My body, my body's taking over. I have to have sex. I have to fornicate. I couldn't stop. Well, that's because you live an undisciplined life. You could actually be in a place where, ain't no, ain't, that ain't affecting me. It doesn't mean that it's not something that when you get married, you, you, I mean, go for it. But at the end of the day, people say, oh, I'm just craving it. Well, change the habit. Change your thoughts. Okay. So uh, again, this discipline thing is big. If you if you're able to accept the discipline of the Lord, if you're able to self discipline, I will tell you this: you're, this is how you're going to get free from these past wounds, these past abuses, whatever. Remember, self discipline is really also about responsibility. All that abuse, all those wounds, all that pain. You know, your 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 family of origin that abused you, the, the 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 relationships you were in, maybe they cheated on you, whatever. Listen, you didn't deserve that. I get it. That's not your fault. But self discipline says I'm responsible for my life. Therefore, I'm going to take those things like trauma and pain, and I'm going to turn them through creating good habits in my life by taking the word of God, consuming it, obeying it, and now I'm going to overcome. I am an overcomer. I mean, how do we overcome? Uh, we overcome by the blood of the lamb and the word of his testimony. What's the word of his testimony? The word of his testimony is the word of God. So listen, whatever your situation is, you have dominion and authority. You can self-discipline. You can take the word of the Lord, apply it to your life, and discipline your life. You're not, you could be self-disciplined to where you don't blame others. You could be self-disciplined to where you forgive others, including yourself. You can be uh, self-disciplined to you essentially extinguish the victim mindset or the victim mode that some are in um, and begin to live out your life in a healthy way. Isn't that what you want? 
I mean, isn't that what you want in 2020? Or do you just, do you want to stay stuck in the rut? Do you want to stay broke? You want to stay in that unhealthy, you know, relationship? You want to stay connected to the toxic people? You want to stay at the broken down religious church? You want to, you want to stay on that job that you hate? Come on, talk to me. Is, is that what you want? Well, then you really just have to continue to just do what you're been, you've been doing. But it's time for a change, okay? Okay, so let's see here. Um, self, okay, thank you. Thanks for putting that in there. Um, <laughs> yeah, I do. Yeah, yeah, procrastination. Yep. Yeah. Um, well, hello, Victoria. I see you. How are you doing? Uh, I'm overcoming pre procrastination by taking it on the head. Um, knowledge is power. Um, if we know exactly what was in some of the foods we eat, such as processed, yeah, exactly, Kaya, okay, um, we would be a lot more hesitant to eat it. Perhaps, you're, you're, yes, we need that knowledge. But again, having the, so I like that. Thanks for sharing it. So I, we have the knowledge that comes to us. I know, okay, but what does the scripture say? My people perish for lack of knowledge, but, but it doesn't stop there because they've rejected the knowledge as well. So we can get that knowledge, Kaya. Thanks for sharing that. We can get the knowledge. We can, you know, look at the, 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 the what is it, the ingredients, and we can say, I got the knowledge. But if we haven't dealt with the programs, if we haven't dealt with self-discipline, okay, which then tells us I'm going to say no, I'm going to deny myself the gratification of eating that garbage, and I'm going to force myself, even though I really don't want to, and go get that salad. I'm going to replace my sandwich with a salad. Okay. Until we do that, we can have the knowledge, but we're going to reject the knowledge because the programs are running that says no, eat the pizza. I mean, let's face it. You know this is true. You're on. You're on. You're on automatic pilot. You're, it's time to change by having self-discipline. So that's, that's good. Okay. All right. Uh, right. Excellent. Oh, uh, well, Kaya, Kaya, you have your hand up. Did you want to say something, type it in, or, or did you just put it in there already? In Can your, you hear me? I do hear you. Oh, okay. <laughs> good morning. I love what you just said. That's yeah, I agree. I agree. It all comes down to um, a decision that we have to make for ourselves have to love ourselves enough to uh, make the right decision. Um, but I wanted to say I struggle with, you know, discipline in certain areas like, you know, like you sleep, uh, wanting to sleep when I should be, you know, studying or focusing on something more productive. Right. And I was, um, I was listening to somebody on YouTube and one of the things he said that just, it just hit home. He was like, the only way we can truly live a, a disciplined life is if we humble ourselves before the Lord. Um, spiritually, you know, sexually, physically, whatever, we have to humble ourselves before the Lord and um, renew our mind yeah. um, consistently, renewing our mind. But we have to make the choice to want it enough to do the work to renew our mind. Um, yeah. I remember, you know, I had some really bad habits um, in my life, and it really came down to me making the decision to want to change, um, to want a better life. I wanted it bad enough um, to do the work and focus on renewing my mind so that I can be better and to do better in life. But it was a decision that I made. Absolutely. Absolutely. Good. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. All right. Well, listen, thanks guys for connecting in today. Um, we'll get this out there on YouTube. I have a little difficulty with YouTube live right now, but we're going to get back at that. Um, please go to the website, summersministries.com and so a seat of support to the ministry. Also, if you're, if you're interested in coaching, whatever the coaching is you need in your life, go to the website, click on the coaching tab, read up about it, see what we have to offer. We'd love for you to coach with any of our coaches, including myself and Dixie. Um, and, and again, you can set up your appointment right online.
Thank you.